Hi everyone, how's life? And welcome to the Christmas season 2023 here at Disneyland Paris. The Christmas season is probably my favorite time to visit Disneyland Paris and it runs from around the mid-November until the beginning of January. So you've got quite a bit of time to come and enjoy the festive season. In this video, I'm gonna check out everything they have going on for the 2023 season. So from the parade, which is my favorite, the Christmas parade at Disneyland Paris is phenomenal. Cannot wait to watch it again. It has returned for its third year, as well as the snacks that they have, some character meets and everything else that's festive. So let's go inside the park. Before we even go inside though, I wanted to show you the entrance of Disneyland Park, which has been festified, if that's even a word. It looks stunning. And of course, we've got the Disneyland Hotel, which will be opening in about just over a month's time, actually in January. If you want to check out vlogs from that, make sure you subscribe because I will be staying there not long after it reopens. And of course, as always, you will notice the Mickey flower bed at the entrance of the park, also ready for the Christmas season in festive colors. Now, of course, the first thing you notice when you enter the park is that unfortunately, the beginning of the entrance is still under renovation. They're doing some pavement work, etc. I think some of it has to do with the Disneyland Hotel reopening. So maybe if you visit throughout the later weeks of the Christmas season, then you won't have that. But you can still see the beautiful train station behind me over there. And they've definitely decked it out for the festive season. It looks amazing. It says happy holidays in the middle. And you've got the beautiful characters from different Disney films around it looking very, very festive. You can actually hear them doing some work behind those walls from time to time. But one thing I wanted to mention about the decorations at the train station is that they've kind of gone with the typical decorations that they have in previous years, I guess because they knew that for the majority of the Christmas season this year, the, the front of it would be closed anyway. They've not changed it to how they did for the Halloween season where you could still see the beautiful stained glass windows. So. It's nothing new, but it's still very festive. It's a beautiful welcome and you can see loads of guests taking photos with it, despite it being obviously under renovation in front of it. But the fun only really starts once you've gone inside the park anyway. So let's head on onto Main Street. I can already spot the castle. The gazebo is all decked out for Christmas. And of course, they are playing Christmas music on Main Street USA. So if you visit during the festive season to Disneyland Paris, you're going to be hearing Christmas festive songs rather than the regular Main Street songs. And I love it. It just it's really put me into a festive mood already. There are so many beautiful decorations around Main Street USA as well as that huge tree, which we are gonna have a look at in a bit. But before we have a closer look at the Christmas decorations on Main Street USA, you can see the beautiful Main Street station there behind me too. This is the other side of it. And as you can see, it is also decked out for the festive season. And if you get here earlier in the morning, it's currently around, I think, 11 a.m. But in the mornings, you might spot Mickey and Minnie waving hello to guests, and they're gonna be wearing their festive outfits as well. So it's definitely worth getting up early. But if you're not a morning person, don't worry, because quite often you're gonna be able to see Mickey and Minnie later in the evening at the park closing time to say goodbye as well. So make sure you keep watching because I'm gonna try and film that for you. With that being said, let's have a look at the beautiful, beautiful, Christmas decorations here so we're starting out with some little snowmen here looking very happy and of course Disney always goes all out so even just the plants and decorations all across the board is very festive you can see loads and loads of Christmas trees around here as well of course the big one being the star of the show it's also a beautiful day today here in Marla Valley Disneyland Paris look at the skies it's not often that you get such beautiful weather here in November. Oh, how sweet. You can see Donald and Daisy here wearing their festive outfits. Donald is giving Daisy a little present. Daisy is looking beautiful and sassy as ever. On the other side, we've got Mickey giving Minnie a present. And Mickey's got loads of presents behind him. So I'm guessing maybe one of the presents might be for me. <laughs> Who knows? But Minnie's looking adorably cute as well. And then, of course, in the middle, we've got the beautiful gazebo, which is unique to Disneyland Paris. And they've decked it out for Christmas with different baubles all the festive colors everywhere and again even the plants around it I love the gazebo no matter when you come the gazebo is gonna be beautiful for you and then of course here we've got this huge a huge Christmas tree which uh, I just think it looks stunning it looks beautiful and look how many presents there are under the tree there are so many of them maybe Mickey's dropped some off for me maybe Mickey <laughs> um, joke aside this Christmas tree is beautiful it is huge and I'm very lucky to have experienced a festive season in two other parks as well I've been to Disneyland California during the Christmas season as well as Hong Kong Disneyland and they've obviously got their own trees as well throughout the season and I genuinely do think that Disneyland Paris's tree is the most beautiful tree
more beautiful than a Christmas tree? Goofy, of course. Goofy, my bae, is chilling here as well with a bunch of presents. Now, if Mickey's not giving me a present, maybe one of the presents from Goofy will be mine. Who knows? But uh, he's looking very happy. A little bit rained on, <laughs> but that's okay. And then, of course, on the other side, we've got Pluto. And Pluto has turned himself into a reindeer. Look at the little horns ears. Um, yeah, he's also got some presents with him. He's on the little sleigh, like a reindeer and he is looking absolutely adorable. Now, the beauty of the festive season continues, of course, with all the beautiful garlands on top of Main Street, and you can see the castle all the way in the back. I love it. The festive atmosphere in Disneyland Paris, especially with the music in the background, as you can hear, it is just like no other, really. I've been to so many different you know, Christmas markets around the world and nothing beats being at Disneyland Paris for me. It's the most magical in my opinion. And it's not just the garlands that are here for the festive season. All the shops across Main Street USA as well have festive decorations around them. They look beautiful, especially lit up when it's darker in the night. So again, keep watching until the end of this video so I can show it to you. But Everything just looks magical, more magical than normal. Now speaking of shops, should we go and have a look at some of the Christmas merchandise for this year? Let's go in. So we're in Emporium, which is one of the biggest shops here at Disneyland Paris. And in terms of merch, we've got quite a few new things this year. This beautiful Spirit jersey has recently been released and it's a Disneyland Paris specific one as well. You can see it by the logo on the back. Disneyland Paris and I love it. I absolutely love the design. Definitely better than what they released last year. In Disneyland Paris so yeah this is potentially something that I might get size wise it starts from extra small and it goes all the way to I think XXL and in terms of price let's have a look okay 80 euros that's kind of what spirit judges tend to be here in Disneyland Paris but yeah leave a comment down below what do you guys think of this I think it looks beautiful now in terms of ears we've got a few different ear selections here this year these ones are lounge fly ones and they're very cute these are 40 euros they're the most expensive ones that they're selling but normally lounge fly ears do tend to be a bit more expensive we've got Mickey on one side Minnie on the other with a cute fluffy red bow up there we've got the ears that were released last year in Disneyland Paris and I really enjoy these as well with the little candy canes and the green bow with snowflakes on it and it actually does say Disneyland Paris on the side as well so it's specific to Disneyland Paris which I enjoy. Those top ears are 25 euros by the way so almost half the price of these lounge fly ones and in my opinion and you know everyone has their own opinions but in my opinion those ones actually look nicer than these ones. I mean these are cute just not as to my taste as the top ones personally. They do also have a third pair though which I think were actually released this year for the first time and apart from this giant tag which I just don't understand why they keep doing I think the actual design of them might be my favorite for the season. I mean look at that it's like very sparkly it's almost like a Christmas tree and the little Mickey bauble seem to be embroidered. So loads of details. I really like the detail on the bow as well. They feel quite nice and light. Um, yeah, this might be my favorite of the three that we've seen. And price-wise, these are also 25 euros. So standards, it standard is generally tend to be between 20 and 25 euros here in Disneyland Paris. Lounge fly ones will obviously be significantly more expensive. But yeah, I think potentially I may, I may get these. I really like them. What do you think? Shall I get these new ones? They're quite similar to what I'm already wearing right now, which I think I got last year. They just have a little bit more detail on them, these ones. See, as you can see, these ones have the Mickey baubles beautifully embroidered on the ears and the green is a slightly darker green than my ears, which you can kind of see over there. Mine seems to be a bit more plain, but still very nice and sparkly. Not sure if I need these or not. <laughs> Convince me in the comments down below. Let me know either way. Do you think I should get these or should I just leave them alone? It's 25 euros and I'll be able to get my annual pass discount on it as well. In terms of other Christmas merch, they've got these beautiful dresses for 60 euros with lovely detail that are very festive for children. They've got these Mickey bubble things, which can be very fun. Let's see the price for them. All right, 35 euros, not too bad. They've got this lounge fly, which is not new. I think this has been around for a while. It's a Disney Parks lounge fly. I do enjoy the big candy cane pocket on the front and all the gingerbread Mickeys. It's cute. Price-wise, though, lounge flies are just always expensive, and I'm pretty sure, yeah, 90 euros for this one. No, sorry, not for me. Oh, this is new. This is definitely new for this year, and I quite like it. It says, do not open until Christmas, and there's a design of loads of different Disney characters on front of this hoodie. There's a Cheshire Cat, there's Dumbo, there's Alice, there's Peter Pan, there's the Genie, there's Bambi, I mean, loads of them. And on the 
bottom here you've got Disneyland Paris embroidered so I presume this is unique to Disneyland Paris I don't really know why Walt Disney World might even need a hoodie because it's very hot there generally uh, price wise ooh, 60 euros so it's cheaper than the spirit jersey but still quite expensive and if you heard some noise it's because a child came and turned one of these on so you can kind of see what they look like now they also make a bit of a festive sound so if you have children or if you just want to have fun yourself fair play go and purchase one this is quite nice too this is a very uh, large size I think but they probably will have yeah this is an XL but they've got other sizes available and it's Mickey looking adorable doing a little wink in his festive outfit and it does say Disneyland Paris it's not embroidered or anything it's just a print but it's another jumper option this one is 56 euros so 56 a little bit cheaper than that other one the hoodie hat wise again nothing new we've seen these before but they are adorable this is a Mickey one with a little hat and it's 30 euros it's really cute and then these ones are 20 euros I actually already own this I got one a couple of years ago now they've been selling these for quite a while it says happy holidays on the front with the castle seasons greetings and it's a nice very festive red and green one thing that is new this year at Disneyland Paris are these hats here they're 30 euros as you can see and they're very cute I love them I mean the materials not the best it's more of a decorative hat but you've got the ears and you've got the cute Mickey design here. I think I might try this on and see how I feel because I do enjoy a nice hat, especially during the holidays. Firstly, I have to say, extremely comfortable and soft. Like, already my head feels so much nicer than when I was wearing the ears. The ears, some ears can be comfortable, some ears are just not the one. And I think the ones that I was wearing were giving me a bit of a headache. So this is already <laughs> an upgrade. Yeah, I like it. I really do like it. <laughs> I think I'm gonna get this guy. Okay, the hat will be purchased, but before I leave the shop I thought I would also show you some of the Christmas ornaments that they were going on here. Stitch is quite big and very popular and loved him in Disneyland Paris So they've got a range dedicated to him 18 euros for this one. There's also some more over here These are 15 euros. These have been around for a while now. They're not new, but they're lovely Dry and it says on the back Disneyland Paris. You've got Pluto again in his reindeer outfit just like we saw earlier um, on Main Street USA. Oh, these are ador adorable. These um, little stockings as a decorative piece. And I think this is new actually. Not seen these ones before. Mickey and Minnie looking adorable. 15 euros, one five euros for the pair of them. There's a stitch one, stands to stitch with a photo frame attached to it. This is definitely new for this year. Again, I'm telling you, they love stitch because I'm not seeing any Mickeys or Minnies with a, with a frame but Stitch is very cutely loving life there. Price-wise, this one is 20 euros. If you're a big Stitch fan, you can go and meet Stitch and you will see that later in the vlog. Put your photo with him here and then hang this up on your tree if you wish to. There's some garlands over there that you can buy. These ornaments have been around for ages, but they are stunning. Um, this is the castle, of course. It's 15 euros, very, very beautiful. And then up here, <laughs> obviously, they had to do Stitch and Angel as well in the same way that they did Mickey and Minnie on the other side. Stitch is basically almost as popular if not more popular than Mickey here in Disneyland Paris and these ones are also 15 euros but yeah in terms of decorations like I said there's some new bits not everything is new the ones that they do have tend to range from around 10 to 20 euros depending on the size and details on them this Disneyland Paris one is quite sweet with Alice and the Cheshire cat we've got Huey Dewey and Louie over here opening up some presents by the Christmas tree again it says Disneyland Paris and these are all 18 euros and probably my favorite from the set Chippendale although they look a little bit oh I've just noticed oh my god look at Dale's mouth he's got chocolate all over it because he's eaten into it's not chocolate sorry the gingerbread man so it's just got biscuit and cookies around his mouth absolutely hilarious gotta love the chipmunks but yeah loads and loads of ornaments available depending on what your style is what you prefer you will be able to find something for your tree if you're visiting during the christmas season this is another new one for this year so it's Minnie mouse putting a little snowflake on top of the tree and it says Disneyland paris yeah this is cute
I've just noticed they're still selling the spirit jersey or jumper that came out last year this kind of beautiful Mickey face one that I don't know how well it sold last year I don't know how popular it was definitely not as popular as regular spirit jerseys but there you go it says Disneyland Paris on the back it's a little bit thicker than a spirit jersey material kind of maybe just a little bit it feels like otherwise it is more or less the same kind of vibe and it's 90 euros so yeah I'd love to hear your thoughts on this like I said it's not new they had this last year as well it's uh, quite sparkly on the front but not my thing personally it is very cute though also if you're looking to get some presents or little bits and bobs for yourself then we've got this Joya Noel tea set advent calendar which is fun so that's an option and price wise this one is 25 euros for the tea set Disneyland Paris advent calendar considering uh, December's coming up very very soon they also have a regular chocolate advent calendar from Disneyland Paris again Joya Noel same kind of design it's a little bit less expensive though yeah there you go this one's 20 euros so five euros cheaper than the tea one they have these tins that you can get with really beautiful decors around them christmas tea from disneyland paris so if you're into tea you may want to enjoy that and then what is this no idea oh what is this does it say what it yeah, i'm just saying follow that now. so this is tea as well just a different kind of tea coming in this beautiful beautiful tin so if you're a tea lover then you've got plenty plenty of options and again stitch looking beautiful i mean these tins would make lovely presents and souvenirs by the way so even if you don't necessarily want the content of it then if you want to keep the tin you can do so i presume this will just be some biscuits they've got a bigger biscuit tin as well here with stitch and you can see the biscuits that they have in there and wow so many options actually for presents when it comes to christmas stuff this one's oh this is lovely organic winter berry jam and it says magical on it Disneyland Paris so loads and loads of festive treats here a season's greeting one over here a tin again with some chocolates on the back as you can see there's another chocolate set over here Joya Noel with some beautiful decorated chocolates inside and if you really want to you can also purchase yourself one of these reusable festive bags here from Disneyland Paris adorable they also have these festive puzzle baubles for seven euros and I love these there's a stitch one of course you open these up and there'll be a little tiny puzzle for you to make they also have a chip and dale one over here and they look so happy <laughs> I guess chips biscuit is off his face now same kind of vibe just a fun little activity to do as well over the Christmas period this huge Christmas train set has been around and on offer for a while when I say on offer I mean it's 150 euros so it is expensive but if you want to purchase something extremely magical then there you go this is the box uh, it's got 38 pieces and you can have the train just go around your Christmas Christmas tree in the house which I mean how much more magical can you get I feel like it's an incredible thing to get not something I would get personally but it's not even too bad for what you're getting to be honest they've also got this beautiful puzzle set a thousand pieces Mickey oh look at Minnie and Daisy kissing the snowman <laughs> okay okay girls i see that um so yeah you've got a puzzle if you want to purchase it from disneyland paris it is 25 euros by the way not too bad for such a lovely design and a puzzle worth mentioning that even just the uh, decor in the shops are really nice for the festive season so always make sure to look around look up especially no matter which shop you go to because there'll be something cute to look at i've also just noticed these cute magnets stitch magnets i'm not seeing any mickey ones but stitches everywhere in Disneyland Paris, five euros. I might actually buy this for my aunt. She's a big Stitch fan. Now, in terms of characters, unfortunately, there aren't any new characters this year for the 2023 season. But don't worry if it's your first time visiting or if you haven't been in a long time or if you just enjoy meeting characters regardless of if you've met them before or not, then you've got plenty of options to choose from. The first one you can find in Town Square, which will be Winnie the Pooh, and he's going to be wearing his festive outfit looking adorable. I mean, Pooh's always a cute meet anyway, but during the festive season, he's extra cute. Um, queue times will be long. They generally are in Disneyland Paris for characters. So if you're hoping to meet any character really get there early you know aim to wait at least an hour probably even longer during the weekend but yeah like i said if you want to meet winnie the pooh this season at disneyland paris then his character spot will be in town square just in front of the entrance to liberty arcade actually so yeah if you want to meet pooh this is where you need to be come here early get excited and you might get a cute little winnie the pooh hug as well so you've met winnie the pooh in his festive year and you want to meet some more characters as well if you just go through the liberty arcade on the other side of it you will find 
this beautiful location with this lovely festive heart. And here is where you guys can meet Chip and Dale. Chip and Dale are in their festive Christmassy outfits. Again, it's not a new thing for the, the 2023 season, but nonetheless, their outfits are adorable. They're a very, very fun meet. I have met them before. Again, the lines can get very long, so if you're planning on meeting them, either get here early or just plan about an hour and a bit into your day to be able to meet them. But they are worth the wait, in my opinion. Chip and Dale are definitely some of my favorite characters to meet in any of the parks because there's two of them. They're very cheeky. They can be loads and loads of fun, so the character interaction with them is always really, really nice. Now, now, perhaps the most popular meet this Christmas season is Stitch. Stitch is extremely popular in Disneyland Paris. Everybody wants to meet him and during the festive period he's going to be wearing his Santa outfit. Santa hat, a little outfit as well. He looks adorable. So if you're planning to meet Stitch, definitely make sure to arrive early. This year they've actually swapped his location to Fancyland. He used to kind of meet at the top of Main Street. Now he's in Fancyland, right next to the old mill, kind of in the corner. So he's actually kind of quite hidden but despite that his queue is about two hours long right now so get here early if you want to meet him I think he starts meeting from 8 30 in the morning so if you have extra magic time then head straight towards Stitch's meet and you should be able to meet him without too much waiting but yeah he's cute he's popular he's adorable and he's come back of course for another season here in Disneyland Paris the one thing that I think is worth mentioning though is that Stitch does not have a photo cast photographer so you can of course take your own photos with your phone with your cameras whatever there'll be cast members to help you take them as well but if you're looking for an official photographer I'm not sure why he didn't have one last year either considering he's so popular they have photo cast photographers for mostly other characters here like in fact all of them so far have had them apart from Stitch so bear that in mind especially if you're thinking of buying the photo pass you won't be able to use it with Stitch so of course with such a long queue I'm not going to meeting him today I have met him before so you would have seen some photos hopefully of when I met him last year but if you're coming to Disneyland Paris and you also don't want to wait in a two hour long queue but you really love Stitch then you may not be able to meet him without waiting too long but they do have a magic shot here with Stitch literally in the same outfit as Santa it's a magic shot which means that it's not obviously going to be Stitch but there'll be a little Stitch in the corner of your photo so you'll be interacting with Stitch in the photo. A lovely photographer will be taking them with you. Now, if you're not much of a Stitch fan, then don't worry. There are other characters that you can meet during the festive season, including Jack Skellington or Sandy Claus, if you will. You can find him in Frontierland, just next to Phantom Manor, which you can see there looking beautiful behind me. It is a spooky, spooky attraction, but still goes quite well, even during the festive months. And yeah, like I said, Jack Skellington will be meeting just next to him he does have a photo pass which is nice normally for the Halloween season he doesn't so I'm glad they brought out a photo pass for him during the Christmas season I think he's also quite a popular meet so maybe not quite as popular as Stitch but still popular enough for you to be you know here an hour an hour and a half early if you really want to make sure you get to meet him and he only meets until around 12 30 p.m. So early, get here early because in the afternoon time he's, he's busy somewhere else I guess. And whilst you're in Frontierland at the entrance of it there is a magic shot again. Unfortunately not of Jack Skellington but it's with Olaf dressed as a present so still very festive. I'll put a photo up so you can see exactly what it looks like. If you want to do it, do it. It's a nice little touch, nice little fun thing to do whilst you're in the parks. And of course the best festive character of all, Goofy. You can meet Goofy in his Santa outfits both in this park, Disneyland Park and in Walt Disney Studios Park, they're going to be wearing the exact same outfit. Like I said, dressed as Santa. In this park, he's going to be in Frontierland and you can see his beautiful backdrop there over there. Um, right opposite Cowboy Cookout if you're looking for his location and he normally meets until around 4.30 p.m. So quite a bit of a longer meet than some of the other characters and I believe it's the same in the other park in Walt Disney Studios Park. In Walt Disney Studios Park, his meet and greet area is at the main entrance basically. Once you get into the park, you'll be able to find him on the left hand side. It's quite a nice uh, backdrop in that park as well. Hopefully you'll be able to see some photos. But um, yeah, you've got two options for Dango or Goofy because he's amazing, right? Now, if Santa Stitch isn't enough, if Goofy as Santa isn't enough, if Sandy Claus, again, Jack Skellington in his Santa outfit isn't enough for you, then you can also meet the real Santa. Yes, that's very magical. I love that you can do that in Disneyland Paris. And the place you need to come for that is in Discoveryland at the Videopolis Theatre. There's a queue line kind of to the left of it. And bizarrely, Santa Claus doesn't seem to be very popular. I mean, he is popular, but not quite as popular as Stitch, for instance. His wait time right now is about 35 minutes, which compared to, for instance, Stitch or Pooh Bear or Tick and Tack, Chippendale, is half of it, even less than that. So if you want to meet Santa, you're in luck. But one thing you need to make sure about Santa Claus is that he's only here at Disneyland Paris until Christmas time. So if you're visiting at the end of the Christmas season, so towards the beginning of January, then he's not going to be here anymore, obviously, because he's already done his job. Um, so if you really want to meet Santa, then definitely come before Christmas. Otherwise, all the other characters will still be around. So let's talk entertainment now. In terms of entertainment, there's not actually 
too much going on this year for the Christmas season. They've, they've got the parade, of course, which we are going to check out later on. But another thing that has returned for, I think, like, I don't know, the fourth, fifth year running is Let's Sing Christmas, which is one of my favorite shows here in Disneyland Paris during the festive period. You can catch it at the Videopolis Theatre in Discoveryland. Again, with any show, I would definitely recommend getting here early because there will be a queue. Not too early, though, at least half an hour early. Should do the job because you want to make sure you actually get inside. Sometimes they might refuse you if the theatre gets fully booked. But um, yeah, it's a great show. I'm really glad that it's back for another season. Let's go and check it out. Dear friends, Disneyland Paris proudly presents Let's Sing Christmas. Well, Let's Sing Christmas just finished. It's always such a joy at watching this show. Again, it's nothing new. It's been around for the festive season in Disneyland Paris for quite a few years now, but I think it's one of my favorite things here. It's just adorable seeing some of our favorite, beloved characters, Mickey, Minnie, Daisy as well. Not my favorite personally, but Daisy's there, Donald's there, Goofy, as Santa comes as a surprise at the end. 
it's just fun you know you're singing Christmas songs and they encourage you to sing along with it and it's a nice Christmas festive time so don't miss it if you're coming for the festive period I feel like it's definitely one of the highlights even though it's not new it's still a very very fun thing to see <laughs> Now from Let's Sing Christmas, we have come to Echo Bell, a little bit, I'm joking. I'm waiting for the Christmas parade, which should be starting in the next half an hour. It's my favorite thing about the Christmas season. Now this Christmas parade debuted literally two years ago, so it's still very new. I was here for its debut in 2021, and I'm so glad that it's back. It's the best Christmas parade I've ever seen in any Disney park, to be fair, so very much looking forward to it. If you want to see the times for it, I would definitely recommend downloading the app and checking the app every single day of your stay, because it can vary, it's not going to be the same every single day. But roughly, it's, the first one is from around 4 o'clock until 5 p.m. roughly, and then the evening one, the later one, which is very much completely in the dark, is sometimes at 6, sometimes at 7, sometimes 7.30. So again, check the app, those are the rough times. I love it. This this parade is just so magical. The song Shine a Light, Shine a Light. I cannot wait to watch it. I love it. I love the song. I love all the characters on it. It just puts everybody in a good mood. It's very busy right now, so I'm gonna I'm gonna try and get out of the way somehow. Today 
you go. That was the first parade of the day, the first Christmas parade. I think it's officially called Mickey's Dazzling Christmas. I love it. Like I said, it's one of my highlights. In fact, it is my highlight of the festive season here in Disneyland Paris. And there will be another one coming up in about an hour's time. Today, the next one's on at 6.10, so 10 minutes past 6 p.m. Normally, like I said, the second Christmas parade is on closer to 7 p.m. But today, 6 p.m. So like I said, make sure to check the app because it will be different depending on what day of the week it is, etc. Um, I enjoy both versions. I like seeing it when it's a bit lighter, like we just did. But also watching it in the dark is kind of the whole point of it, really, in some ways. With the shining light, shining light. I mean, they're both great. So I would actually highly recommend trying to catch the second show if you really want to see this beautiful Christmas tree shine a light shine a light yeah i know this christmas tree, they do a little christmas lighting ceremony thing not an, an official one but all the characters on the parade when they're going past this area of town town square on the way to the castle then they will do that so the first parade normally starts from the castle and ends here and then the second parade will start from town square and go all the way back to the castle <laughs> Let's talk snacks, especially festive Christmassy snacks. Now, this year, unfortunately, Disneyland Paris hasn't released too many festive snacks, but fear not, we do still have quite a few that I'm going to try in this video, starting with Victoria's. Now, Victoria's is a sit-down table service restaurant, and normally every season, whether it's Christmas or Halloween, they tend to have a couple of new snacks for that season. And this year, at Victoria's, you can find a couple of things. They have a Mickey waffle with salted caramel sauce on it. It's meant to be very festive with a little Santa on it. Very cute looks adorable I'm excited to try it and they also have a cake normally they do patisseries but this time they've gone for a full-on cake to share it looks really cute so again I'm excited to try it let's go in and give it a go so we've come to Victoria's for the two festive snacks that they have this year for 2023 and I'm in a really nice quiet spot actually it also didn't have to queue long but that's not normally the case if you want to eat here definitely you know expect to queue a little bit before you come in so we've got the festive menu here as you can see Christmas delight. Now Victoria's normally does little pastries. Um, this year they've decided to go for a big cake and a gof, a Mickey waffle. The Mickey waffle looks very nice so definitely, in fact I'm going to try both of them. The cake is called the Christmas cake to share. Apparently inside you've got some mandarin mousse, cocoa, biscuit, coconut and passion fruit, milk rice, gingerbread spices and yeah that's it. It's 15 euros so it's a cake to share like it says in the menu. Obviously it's only me here today so I'm not sure I'm going to be able to finish it. I'm probably going to have to take most of it home for the hotel for later but it looks cute and then the waffle is nine euros and that one comes with salted butter caramel sauce whipped cream and meringues and the waffle i think i'm going to be okay finishing we'll see so the cake has arrived and it is big i mean this is a full-on cake it looks adorable presentation very cute i like the plate it comes in as well but just so you guys can, can compare this is my hand and this is the size of the cake it's it's big you can definitely share this not between just two people but maybe three or four maybe even five you can have a little slice each so it might be 15 euros but if you split the cost between you know a few of you then it becomes a bit more reasonable it's also quite like you know high as well very nice love the decoration there's some chocolates on it some gingerbreads so yeah looking forward to giving this a taste test we've also got our mickey gof the mickey waffle here that has arrived as well this one is also quite big it looks amazing it looks cute it looks adorable you've got the sorted caramel sauce on it the meringues some cream a little festive uh, santa mickey chocolate as well yeah this is definitely i think already this is going to be my favorite of the two snacks here at victoria's for the festive season but i'll definitely give the the gato to share a little try as well i also decided to get myself a hot chocolate this is just a regular hot chocolate that they have with cream on you can always get it during the winter months here at victoria's i thought i needed a nice hot drink with all my snacks so yeah without further ado let's give these a taste test so there you go i think i'm going to try the beautiful Mickey waffle first because it's the one I'm looking forward to the most. There you go, I've got a little bit of the waffle with the caramel sauce and a meringue. 
It's delicious. It's festive. It's cute. I like how the sweetness of the meringues complements the salted caramel sauce. The actual texture of the waffle, like I said, is really lovely. Quite crispy on the outside, very nice and soft on the inside, and also warm, which is nice. So, yeah, I'm happy with it. Okay, I'm going to try my best to cut this cake now in half. Ooh, the chocolate kind of ruined it, but apart from that, I think it's a pretty decent job so we can see what's inside it and all the layers there you go you can see the details inside the cake a bit better now it seems to have about three different layers and we're gonna have a look at it better in a second but yeah some cream in it of course as it said in the menu there'll be some kind of uh i think passion fruit flavor in it oranges etc so yeah it's a full-on cake it's a very festive christmasy cake so this is the cake split in half and you can see all the layers inside it um still really big so it's a cake to share between loads of people not even just two people i feel like so with that being said i'm gonna take my first slice of it and see what i think there you go seems to be a little bit of a chocolate biscuity layer on the bottom and then some cream so mm. it's nice i can see what you mean about it being light yeah by the way i'm not here on my own i mean <laughs> you'll meet some lovely viewers that i'm sat right next to you and um they, they've already tried the cake but um they said that it was quite light and i can i can totally see that the flavor of the orange or like fruit whatever's in there is quite strong so you need to love orange tangerine passion fruits to enjoy this cake but i feel like the taste is actually very christmasy it's very festive because of that like as soon as i put this in my mouth i felt festive suddenly um so yeah it's a very particular taste but if you like mandarins passion fruit the taste of oranges kind of like sour taste with your cakes then you are going to enjoy it and i like it i actually am pleasantly surprised with it i'm gonna have a little bit of the chocolate as well i feel like it's just going to be some dark chocolate this is a good cake this cake surprised me so both of the things that you can get in victoria's this year the mickey waffle and the cake i would recommend just bear in mind that with the cake you obviously need to enjoy you know the taste of fruits in your cake to enjoy it and with the waffle if you don't like salted caramel then you might not like it but i feel like the, this one's probably more appealing to a wider audience but the cake's really nice too i'm here with kira <laughs> she, we said hi she spotted you as soon as i came into yes. victoria's and you had both of the things right you had the yep. waffle what did you think yeah the waffle was really nice mm -hmm. i thought it was just the perfect amount of whipped cream and the syrup and yeah. it's really nice i agree i agree and you had some of the cake as well yeah you think thank you that's all right um it was really nice i thought it was good to share it i don't mm -hmm. i think like for one person too much is too way much. too much yeah i think it was really nice and light and subtle and yeah i really enjoyed it well thank you kira thank you kira oh, and shout out to grace and also Beth is with us as well. Yeah, Beth, she's on our camera. She's amazing. <laughs> oh, thank you, thank Kira. You. Just wanted to quickly mention that the hot chocolate was really lovely as well. But then hot chocolate almost always is nice here in Disneyland Paris and the cream definitely made it sweeter and nicer. Um, but in terms of the two snacks, I think obviously my preference would still be the waffle, the Mickey waffle, because it's, it's just adorable. It's a Mickey waffle at the end of the day. But the cake was really delicious as well. Well, I've just left Victoria and I've bumped into the lovely... Hi! Evie! Hi. Have you had a good time in Disneyland Paris? Yes. Yeah? Loving the Christmas festiveness yes. as well? Yes. Best thing you've done? Yes, definitely. Yeah? yeah, any other rides that you've, you know, enjoyed the most? Um, Big Thunder. Big Thunder Map. She's got a good taste. <laughs> Baby, thank you so much. Give me a high five. <laughs> thank Bye. you. Bye-bye. <laughs> oh, it's always so lovely meeting you guys. I also want to give a big shout out to John, who was celebrating his ninth birthday. I met John as well and his lovely family whilst I was in Victoria. So, so many of you. It's always nice spending some time chatting to you guys. But I feel like our first snacks of the season were really good as well. We started off on a high, so let's go and try some more snacks. Oh, we started off on such a high with the snack game here at Disneyland Paris for the Christmas 2023 season. However, the next snack was one that I was actually kind of looking forward to. It's a marshmallow cake pop kind of thing, looking very cute. There's one in Mickey version, Mickey and one mini. You can find it at the Old Mill in Fancyland, which is where I'm standing right now. The Old Mill normally has some of my favorite snacks actually. They do the little bitter ballon as well. These are just savory, non-Christmassy snacks that I really enjoy. But yeah, that's where you could get them. I'm filming this on the 18th of November 2023. The Christmas season only started about five, six days ago and unfortunately it sold out both of them i double checked with the cast member she felt really bad but she said yeah they're sold out i asked her if she thought they would have them tomorrow and she said 
she doesn't know. She doesn't even know if they'll have it tomorrow or the following day. Tomorrow's a Saturday, we've got Sunday coming up, the weekend, and they might not have this Christmas snack at all um, available. It's very sad because it's not like we have too many Christmas snacks to choose from this year. And the ones that they have, obviously the ones at Victoria's were lovely and I really enjoyed that. But Victoria's generally always tends to be really nice. Um, yeah, one of them is out, so I might not be able to try it at all. But hopefully you can see what it looks like and maybe if you come, they'll have it. Don't count on it. Try if you're walking past Fantasyland, you know, give it a go. Maybe they'll have it, maybe they won't. But don't like focus on getting it because you might end up disappointed. Our next snack is a savory one and it's at Cafe Hyperion in Discovery Land, a location where they normally have, you know, celebratory meals, menus for different holidays. And they've brought out the Christmas version now. So let's have a look at the burger. So there you go. This is the burger, the Christmas menu, 17 euros. Jingle Bells truffle burger. It's got some beef steak, summer truffle raclette cheese, uh, Charolais beef delight rocket salad and cheddar cheese. Comes with fries and a cold drink. 17 euros. Like I said, you can get your annual pass discount on it. Uh, it looks good, the burger. I have to say I'm a big fan of raclette and I just love anything that's cheesy and truffle. So hopefully this will be nice. Let's go in and give it a taste test. So there you go. After about a 20 minute wait in the queue, I finally got my meal. Uh, the wrapping is really nice. The Zan Paris, very Christmassy, very festive. Burger feels okay. You've got the side of fries and I decided to go for water for my drink. With my annual pass discount, by the way, the menu came to about 14 euros rather than 17. It already feels quite empty, I feel like. The tray, like, compared to previous years where you would normally get a dessert included in the festive menu, now it's literally just a burger. The burger is the only part, oh, there you go, the only part of <laughs> the festiveness. The, the fries are just regular fries that you would get throughout the year, but um, I'm looking forward to it nonetheless. So there you go. This is what the burger looks like. Nice and warm. It's got a layer of random i think meat on there you've got the rockets you've got the cheese the raclette that is the beef over here and then mo loads more cheese on at the bottom and some cheese sauce which sounds good to me so we'll give it a go you know despite there being quite a bit of cheese in there the first bite at least felt pretty dry um, the cheese look it's quite a lot of cheese quite a thick layer of cheese raclette cheese i'm not really tasting any truffle either so far so i'm gonna continue eating okay i'm getting the cheese raclette flavor a bit more and it's really nice actually the cheese is delicious the burger itself is fine not the best burger i've had in cafe hyperion but it's it's good i mean i can't say it's a bad burger i'm just not necessarily blown away by it Anyway, Cafe Hyperion may have stopped doing desserts in their menus, but we've got a couple of new snacks here for the festive season at La Enchante in Fancyland. So let's go and have a look. You can see them over here, La Enchante. So they've got two Christmas treats here in Fancyland's La Enchante. There's a, a Mickey Gourmand biscuit, basically a Mickey snowflake bake is what it's called. This red one here for four euros fifty. And then there's also a Mickey's jam cookie, which I believe has strawberry. Yeah, there you go, strawberry jam shortbread. Um, this one looks definitely very very cute and it's bigger than the other one but i'm not a strawberry fan at all so unfortunately i'm not going to be trying this however this one will give it a go it looks cute as well and you can see them over there so this left one is the strawberry big shorter bread and then the middle one the red one is the one that i'm gonna get so it's considerably smaller the one i'm getting but it's also uh actually it's more expensive the one i'm getting i just noticed this one's 450 that one's four so hmm Hopefully it will taste nice. Oh, well, there you go. Got the Mickey Snowflake Bake. It's um, It looks pretty cute to be fair. I'm excited to take it out of the box. I love that they're still using 30th anniversary packaging though. Okay, well, this is what it looks like. I think it's actually very, very cute. It's adorable. And this is the back of it. So it's a bit different to your regular biscuit. That's why it's a Mickey Snowflake Bake. It also smells lovely. So, I mean, everything so far is going well for this snack. So hopefully, it will taste nice as well. Let's give it a go. That's good. That's really good. It's uh, very sweet, but 
it tastes nice and because it's um bake rather than like you know a, a very i suppose hard and dry cookie the texture is really nice as well and the sugar everything i've put on it i love it i would give this a 10 out of 10 in terms of snacks especially for disneyland paris they've done a good job with this so at the boardwalk candy palace they've got a couple of new things for the christmas season this year they've got a sable which is just a biscuit as you can see with hazelnut spread and it's in the shape of mickey it's almost like a little mini gingerbread mickey except it's just a biscuit um really excited to try that they look adorable as well they've also got some new cake pops with some uh, Christmassy, I guess, stars on them, Christmas colour stars. 250 euros for these ones. The sablers are 5 euros. They've also got a mini cake pop with chocolate raspberry and marshmallow. This one is chocolate and praline. And then, of course, they've got all the other regular biscuits they've got as well. The cookies, I guess, are kind of Christmassy fight too because they've got some stars on them. But those three items are the main ones for this season. So, I got the goods from Boardwalk Candy Palace, some of the new Christmas snacks they have. This is the Mickey praline cake pop thing. It looks like a slightly melted Mickey. I mean, in terms of its balance, the left side's looking a little bit, the ear especially, <laughs> not the best, not almost Instagrammable. But I'm sure it's still gonna taste nice for sure. I have tried the cake pops in Disneyland Paris before and generally they seem to taste lovely. Of course, I also had to get the Mickey Sable, the Mickey little biscuit situation. It didn't, doesn't look its best right now. I feel like the pants are a little bit off, but apart from that it's still adorable it's still quite an instagrammable snack i'm looking forward to testing it though i think it's got a layer of chocolate hazelnut spread inside and i got myself some hot chocolate of course i had to get hot chocolate i love hot chocolate here in this land paris it's one of my favorite snacks to get if you want to call it a snack i know it's more of a drink funny to see it. they still have the 30th anniversary logo on the cup and it's just nice especially in the festive season when it's starting to get dark and cool a nice cup of hot chocolate in Disneyland Paris makes everything more magical right so I'm not sure if you can see or not but it's actually snowing on Macy USA this is Santa's present to us here in Disneyland Paris so what better way to enjoy an evening here than enjoy some, some hot chocolate it's in the festive music to see the beautiful castle there and then of course the Christmas tree on the other side and just enjoy your hot chocolate I'm gonna try the cake pop first because I don't know I feel like the gingerbread it's not the gingerbread it's the regular cookie is a little bit cuter than this one so the ears are the marshmallows and the chocolate is really nice to be fair I think the actual cake would be in the in the in the face in the head it is the whole head of Mickey is the cake pop it's chocolate and praline so if you don't like praline then don't get it I enjoy praline though and I feel like the chocolate is really nice like it. it's quite hard I mean you can tell it's just come out of the fridge I personally would have preferred if it was not quite as cold because um it makes it a bit hard to bite into mm. but as far as snacks though it's not bad it's not a bad snack let's try the Mickey biscuit now you can see what I mean about the, the pants they just seem to be a little bit on the side I don't know it's still cute though um so yeah I'm guessing it's just some some frosting and some chocolate on the ears Inside, as I said, you can see the layer of chocolate, which will be interesting. So yeah, let's give it a go. I mean, it's not bad. It really isn't bad. I wish they'd done something a bit more creative. I like the, um, the design of it. I like how it looks. I think that's quite creative. But the taste, the fact that it's just a biscuit, um, the hazelnut spread adds a little bit of something to it. And it's very much hazelnutty, by the way, not just chocolate. I don't think it's Nutella necessarily. Maybe it is, but I feel like we've seen too many biscuits, personally, in Disneyland Paris over the past few years. Um, they're not the most exciting or adventurous of snacks. Ooh! <laughs> okay! It's time to celebrate the joy of the season as we light our beautiful Christmas tree. So yes, that was a nice surprise. I enjoyed that, a little short but beautiful Christmas lighting ceremony with the voice of Santa. Um, but yeah, as I said about the biscuit, it's not a bad snack by any means. It's very cute, in fact. I just, I, I'm, I want more from Disneyland Paris and hopefully, hopefully next year, maybe they will get some more Christmas treats. But in terms of looks, great, taste-wise, it was fine. Uh, same with the cake pop. I think I actually prefer the cake pop in terms of taste. The Mickey biscuit was cuter though, right? Now, if you've watched until this part of the vlog, firstly, thank you so much. If you have enjoyed it so far, please give this video a like and subscribe as well. It does help out the channel. <laughs> Look, I'm literally sat next to a bin again because I thought, why not just show you 
the second parade in this video as well. It's getting dark, we got to see the lighting ceremony and I'm just happy so if you watch this far you're going to get to see Mickey's Dazzling Christmas Parade in the dark as well. It should be starting in the next 45 minutes. I'm going to be waiting here in the cold until then and I cannot wait. <laughs> Jamais de rêver Well, there you go. That was the second Christmas parade of the day. I love it. I love the music. And it rained. It started raining. It was not meant to rain today at all, but always be prepared for rain and snow and cold weather and unpredictable weather in France because it rained out of the blue and everybody was like, oh, what do we do? But, you know. I had my coat thankfully so it's all good. It did mean that I had to film most of the parade on my phone so the quality wasn't the best because you guys are not waterproof the camera I'm holding right now. But um, yeah, I was feeling amazing. I love it. I don't really want to leave but we have come towards the end of the Christmas 2018 vlog. Look at the Christmas tree in the dark now and you can see the twinkling lights of the garlands on Main Street USA as well. In the background, you can see a little bit of the castle too. Seriously, look how big the baubles look on this Christmas tree. I think now that they're all lit up as well, you can appreciate them even more. And I wanted to show you Main Street USA as well because even though Main Street USA is magical, no matter what time of year you come and no matter what time of day it is, in the dark it just looks extra magical. So a few things to note about the Christmas season because we've more or less seen everything that it has to offer now. 
Um, there's no daytime parade, so Stars on Parade has been on pause now since the beginning of the Christmas season. It won't be coming back until the beginning of January, so throughout Yo the whole guys. Christmas season, whilst they've got the Christmas parade on, unfortunately for the first time in a long, long time actually, the main parade isn't here. I think it's because they need to work on it to bring it back fresh hopefully in 2024 so that's something to bear in mind the only parade that is on during the Christmas season this year is the festive parade that we just saw uh, there's two showings of it every day though which is nice I do feel like in terms of snacks and food it was probably the weakest Christmas season that I've personally experienced here in Disneyland Paris I mean the snacks that I tried none of them were bad or terrible a couple of them I couldn't even get because they were sold out even though we're only about a week into the Christmas season which is a shame um, yeah, and unfortunately because the Lucky Nugget Saloon is currently closed, that's one of the restaurants that normally offers a Christmas meal or a Christmas menu. It's currently under refurbishment, the actual restaurant, so to no fault of anybody really, there couldn't be a Christmas menu at the Lucky Nugget. I think it's going to reopen towards the end of December, just before Christmas maybe. So who knows, maybe when it reopens they will end up introducing a Christmas menu, but I kind of don't see it considering you know, it's closed for the majority of the Christmas season. And then Annette's also in the village does have a Christmas burger that should be coming out later on. So I think on the 12th of December, but, which is still great. I mean, Annette's does great burgers. I do enjoy Annette's burgers. It's just not available throughout the whole season. Whilst we're on the topic of food though, L'Hiver Gourmand is currently happening in the other park, in Montezuma Studios Park. That's not necessarily just for Christmas. It's called L'Hiver Gourmand because it's for the winter season. It's just started and it will be going on until the beginning of March. I've made a whole video about that, so if you want to see what the food offerings are there, I'll leave the link down below. But generally, they tend to do things like mulled wine, pretzels, tahti flet, um, cute sweet things like chocolate covered marshmallows, things like that. So it's a great thing. It's really nice. It's in Place de Remy in the Ratatouille area of Walking Studios. So check that out if you want some food offerings. Also, if you're visiting any of the Disneyland Paris buffet restaurants over the festive season, then there should be a couple of Christmas festive offers as well at the buffet services. So it's not going to be fully Christmas, but the buffet restaurants should have a few different Christmas bits and bobs, either cakes or desserts, or maybe some main courses, things like that. And they'll be the same in all the buffet restaurants. So that's another thing to bear in mind. Lastly, if you enjoy a festive beverage, then and most of the hotels and lounges and bars also should have some alcoholic beverages, some cocktails, things like that. Also sometimes some non-alcoholic ones as well that are to the festive season. So if that's something that you're interested in, then check out some of the lounges, especially in the hotels and ask for their festive menu. They should have a few different things available for the festive season. And one more thing that I forgot as well, if you want to go to any of the stands in the other park, the Bière Gourmand, then they have very similar stands this year in uh, Fantasyland just in front of this is more world it's made it very difficult to move there it's I mean like it's just very busy these stands are extremely popular and the stands in Disneyland Park in front of it's more world basically offer the exact same things as the stands in Liber Gourmand they're just decorated a bit differently but things like mulled wine pretzels little hot snacks things like that you can get also in this park uh, like I said in Fantasyland outside this small world I tried to walk past it today and it was just so crowded it was impossible for me to film anything without you know getting in people's way so you know the food is the same as what you can see in the park which i will leave the link down below but it's something for you to you know do or enjoy or get a little drink from if you're walking past a small world um i don't know i think it's cute i do think the location isn't the best personally they've got quite a few stands so like i say it just makes it extremely crowded especially on busy days and of course there'll be a couple of festive snacks in disney village as well but in terms of nighttime shows, you can see the castle looking phenomenal there in the back. I just love it. I love this time of evening, <laughs> no matter what time of year it is. But like I said, especially during the Christmas season, it's just so stunning, just chilling. Even when it's rained, even when everything's wet, it's still lovely being in Main Street, USA. But um, yeah, so the nighttime show this year, last year they brought back Disney Dreams of Christmas, which you can check out in my vlog from last year if you wish to. I was so happy. I loved it. It's just so festive and so cute. Uh, it's not as good as Dreams. I do prefer the regular dreams, but Disney Dreams of Christmas was also magical. There are some moments in there that I just absolutely love. Unfortunately, this year they've decided to just stick with the dreams, Disney Dreams. I personally don't mind because I do think that ultimately Disney Dreams is a better nighttime show than Disney Dreams of Christmas. So if you're coming during the Christmas season, don't worry, you're still going to get a fantastic nighttime show on the Sleeping Beauty Castle here in Disneyland Paris. Disney Dream is a dream. <laughs> it really is. It's a beautiful show. You do have to try and kind of get close to Castle for it. It's not the best show in terms of like 
there's a lot of projections basically and a lot of them are kind of on the lower parts of the castle so if you really want to fully experience it then I, I would suggest trying to get a good spot for it because the fireworks elements aren't too much but it's still fantastic the soundtrack I mean you guys know how much I love Disney Dreams but yeah no nighttime show which is why I am going to be slowly but surely leaving the park and I guess the last thing is you know, of course Mickey and Minnie that are going to wave goodbye to us which I'll show you in a bit but before we do that I wanted to just share my thoughts on the Christmas season 2023 so overall it's a great season like the fact that you've got so many cute Christmas things happening for free as in complimentary to your tickets to come to the park I think it's excellent the US parks do not do that in the US if you visit during the holidays during the Christmas period for the most part you're not going to get anything extra you might get a couple of decorations but you're not going to get a full-on show or a Christmas parade things like that oftentimes you have to pay extra for a ticket at the event like $200 things like that to be able to fully experience the Christmas season in those parks and I like the fact that a lot of these things are just in the parks for every guest you don't have to be spending more money just to be able to experience more Christmas stuff but there are definitely some things that I do miss I mean it's very noticeable especially as somebody who's been coming to the parks for so many years now I can see why some people are sad about some of the things that have been missing from the Christmas season I mean they used to have Mickey's big band show in the other park in Walt Disney Studios Park which was such a great show really really fun even in terms of just characters you could uh, you could meet so many different characters in their festive gear back in the days you know Miss Bunny and Thumper they used to wear like Christmas outfits and you could meet them uh, in the park you used to be able to meet Mickey and Minnie in festive outfits which you just can't do anymore and I think that's a shame as well I feel like Mickey and Minnie surely you can put them in some nice festive outfits and have them out for meet and greets things like that and obviously the food element I've already talked about it's not been the best this year yeah it's definitely not the strongest Christmas season that we've seen in Disneyland Paris but despite that I feel like it's still extremely magical I mean personally even if they didn't do anything and just decorated Disneyland Paris with Christmas decorations I would be happy but we get an incredible parade that is on daily twice We've got this beautiful Christmas tree, we've got the other show, Let's Sing Christmas that I showed you, we've got some character meets, some food. I mean, there's, there's more than what I would expect, really, so I'm happy, but I know that they can do better and I really do hope that Disneyland Paris brings some new stuff next year, or at least brings back some of the things that they took away. Like, even the Christmas tree ceremony used to be a lot bigger, it was a full-on event back in the days. And now, I mean, it's still beautiful, but it's not quite as magical, it's not as much of a thing as it used to be. So all those things, if they come back, I'll be even happier. But with that being said, I think we've got one last thing left to do. Before I go though, again, thank you so much to anybody that I met today. I met so many of you in the parks and it's always really lovely meeting you and chatting to you. And if I don't get to spend too much time chatting to you, I do apologize. It's because I'm filming but oftentimes I might be on the way to somewhere so I'm not able to chat too long, but thank you. It does really mean a lot to me. It really warms my heart on a cold evening like this on a cold rainy day meeting you guys brings me joy I did also want to mention that I do have cameo so if you guys want any messages personalized messages or video messages the link is down below especially with Christmas coming up let me know the link is down below like I said or you can just type my name and you'll be able to find me but with that being said it's time to bid this beautiful park and this beautiful Christmas tree farewell but fear not I'll be making a few more vlogs during the Christmas season this is just the main one with all the information that I thought you guys might be needing or wanting to know for this year's Christmas season and let's say goodbye to Mickey and Minnie and it's goodbye from me right now see ya Je ne veux pas de lumière. Je ne veux pas de lumière. Je ne veux pas de lumière.